If you're a cosmetologist struggling on doing men's cuts, then I'm about to show you an easy way that you can do so in five minutes. All right, now, of course, the first thing you have to do whenever you begin a haircut is do the consultation, which we already did. And he decided that he wants to begin with the half guard, lever all the way closed, beginning right in the temple area. We're gonna begin sliding up and down, lowering the ear with my pinky. That way I can really dig in right behind the ear. And again, continue sliding up and down, making sure that I create a nice, straight, consistent line going all the way throughout the back. Notice how I'm not flicking out. I'm literally just allowing the clipper to slide up and down, staying flush against his head. And again, that's gonna allow me to create a nice, consistent line that I'm gonna be able to see, and I'm gonna know where I'm at within the fade at all times. All right, now that we have a nice, consistent line all the way throughout, I'm gonna be switching into my number one guard and I'm gonna continue with the lever all the way closed. And I want you to repeat the same steps, literally laying the clipper flat on the scalp and just sliding up and down, following the same line that you just created, but this time going about a finger's width above that first line. By creating a finger's width above the first line, that's gonna give you enough space to be able to go back in and erase any lines that you created. Again, making sure that I stay parallel with the first initial line, meaning wherever this line drops down, I'm gonna make sure that I drop the next line down with it. This is where it does get a little bit tricky, but it's not really that tricky. Cause you have to keep in mind, cutting hair is just like knowing how to count. We begin with the half guard and we made a section with the number one, but we created the first line with the half guard lever all the way closed. We're gonna go ahead and open the lever a quarter of the way. But this time I'm really gonna make sure that I tilt out to where I have enough room to place a finger right behind the guard. That way I can ensure that I'm only working with one small section of the blade and I can really work in that small designated area and it's gonna prevent me from cutting into an area that I don't wanna cut into. Notice wherever the line's at, I'm beginning right underneath it and I'm just gonna go about a quarter inch above it. So beginning below that line and slide a quarter inch above it. Not all the way to the number one, but just a quarter inch above it. And we're just gonna be doing that all the way around. And now that first initial line is completely faded out. All right, now we gotta worry about this next line, right? And we know that we created that line with the number one. So now we're gonna take a number two guard with the lever all the way closed. And we're gonna create another section above that. Once again, making it about a finger's width. The only thing with this now is that since we are by the top of the head now, I really wanna make sure that I start creating that square silhouette. So this time as I'm working my way up, I'm gonna go ahead and finish off with the number two. So I'm gonna be digging in and I'm just gonna go right off the head. Cause if I started curving into the head, then we would remove all this weight and it would really give him a round shape to his head shape. And that's the exact same thing we're gonna be doing in the back especially. I don't wanna cut it into his crown area. I just wanna allow his head shape to guide my clipper right off. An easy way to determine that you're going right off the head is by laying a comb flat on the head. Wherever the comb stops touching the head, that's the angle that you know your clipper is gonna be coming off the head. And now that we finished off with the number two at the top, we still have a line in between the number two and the number one, which if you know how to count, you know how to fade, cause we know that in order to take out that line in between the number one and the number two, we're gonna be using a one and a half guard. Again, we're gonna dig in, but we're also gonna be tilting out. That way I'm only gonna be using about the first or two teeth on the guard to really be able to work in that one small designated area to begin fading that out. Now, of course, if you still have some demarcation left behind, then you can always switch into your number one guard with the lever all the way open this time. And the lever all the way open is gonna make the number one guard equivalent to the one and a half guard, but it is gonna be offset a little bit to where the number one cuts a little bit shorter than a one and a half guard allowing us to completely take out that line of demarcation. And in case you're a little lost on what the lever does, all the lever initially does is that it extends the top blade away from the bottom blade. So if I open up the lever, the top blade is gonna extend away from the bottom blade, which is gonna cut less hair. If I close the lever, that top blade got closer to the bottom blade, which again, is going to cut more hair. But now that we have the initial rough draft set in on the fade, we're gonna go ahead and line up the neckline. And a lot of this is gonna be corner work, right? I'm only using the corner of my blade to really be able to create that curved shape. And the main reason why I began my edge up right behind the ear is cause that is my guideline. This acted as a guideline to be able to work in this direction. And now it's gonna act as a guideline to work down the neck. I'm gonna begin at the top and I'm gonna be placing half the blade on the line that I already created and I have the blade on the new line that I wanna create, and I'm just gonna go straight down. You never wanna begin at the bottom and work your way up. 
because by working at the top and working down, then I can determine what direction my line is going to be going in. And of course, I'm going to be showing you an easy, simple technique on how you can cut the top. But I'm going to begin by creating my guideline in the front. And once I have the first guideline set in the front, now I'm going to go back in. But this time, I'm going to be taking vertical sections and I'm going to be lifting up the hair. And as you can see, my guideline is right in the front by my fingertips. So I'm going to continue working my way back. Now when it comes to the cowlick, of course you want to be able to read the direction of the hair growth. So I'm going to be combing out the hair wherever it naturally wants to lay in. And I'm going to be finding my guideline, which is right here, and I'm going to match it up with the cowlick. Because if you cut the hair in a direction it doesn't want to naturally fall down in, then of course that's whenever you get the hair sticking up everywhere. But anyways, just like that, in five minutes, we were able to do a nice, simple haircut. Now, of course, I didn't show how to do this side. Camera's right behind you, bro. I don't want you to trip. I ain't worried about the camera. I'm worried about your safety. <laughs> <laughs> he did. <laughs> worried about my guy's safety right now, you know. But anyways, like I said, I didn't show how to do this side. But of course, five minutes on that side and five minutes on this, you're looking at a total time of 10 minutes just to do the sides. Then by the time you do the top, that should be another five minutes, which would end up being 15 minutes, which if you're like me at 15 minutes, that allows you to be able to do the beard and to be able to go back in detail for the last 10 minutes. So overall, like I said, just remember to keep that clipper flat on the head, slide up and down, create those nice consistent lines so you understand where you're at within the fade at all times. And if you have any other further questions about how to cut men's hair, make sure you comment below. That way I know how to help you out in the next video.